Governmental programs are designed to provide a safety net for some of the nation's most vulnerable families and individuals. The Supplemental Poverty Measure, or SPM, helps us to estimate how well these programs are working to pull people out of poverty. The SPM extends the official poverty measure. It starts with cash income, then adds non-cash benefits such as food and nutritional assistance programs, energy assistance, and housing subsidies, while subtracting out necessary expenses like taxes, health care, commuting, and child care costs. The SPM uses poverty thresholds produced by the Bureau of Labor Statistics based on spending on food, clothing, shelter, and utilities. These thresholds are adjusted for family size and composition, as well as for geographic differences in the cost of housing. The SPM report is based on data from the Current Population Survey's Annual Social and Economic Supplement. The SPM does not replace the official poverty measure and is not used to determine eligibility for the government programs. Let me begin by summarizing the main findings from this report. The SPM rate in 2018 was 12.8%. This is not statistically different from the 2017 SPM rate of 13%. The SPM rate for 2018 was one percentage point higher than the official poverty rate of 11.8%. There were 15 states plus the District of Columbia for which SPM rates were higher than official poverty rates, 24 states with lower rates, and 11 states for which the differences were not statistically significant. The SPM uses thresholds produced by the Bureau of Labor Statistics from Consumer Expenditure Survey data. Separate thresholds are created for renters, homeowners with a mortgage, and those who own their homes free and clear. While the official poverty threshold is constant throughout the United States, the SPM adjusts for geographic differences in housing costs. This map shows those differences, with yellow areas having lower thresholds for renters than the official poverty threshold, and blue and green areas having higher thresholds. This slide compares the SPM estimates for 2018 with the SPM estimates for 2017 for all people and by age group. The 2018 SPM rate for the entire population was 12.8%. This is not statistically different from the 2017 rate of 13%. SPM rates were not statistically different for any of the major age categories in 2018 compared with 2017. SPM rates for children under age 18 were 13.7%. Adults aged 18 to 64 had a rate of 12.2%, and adults aged 65 and older had a rate of 13.6% in 2018. This slide compares SPM estimates for 2018 with the official poverty estimates for all people and by age group. The 2018 SPM rate for the entire population was one percentage point higher than the 2018 official poverty rate. Looking at specific age categories, the SPM rate was lower than the official poverty rate for children but higher than the official poverty rate for people aged 18 to 64 and people aged 65 and older. Census Bureau estimates for the SPM are available back to 2009. Since the SPM's initial production, the SPM rate has been higher than the official poverty rate, ranging from 0.6 to 1.6 percentage points higher than the official measure over this period. While the SPM national poverty rate was higher than the official, that difference varies by geographic area. This figure shows the United States divided into three categories by state. There were 15 states plus the District of Columbia where SPM rates were higher than official. These are shaded orange. There were 24 states where SPM was lower than official. These are shaded blue. And finally, there are 11 states where the differences in rates were not statistically significant. These are gray. One important contribution that the SPM provides is allowing us to gauge the effectiveness of tax credits and transfers in alleviating poverty. We can also examine the effects of non-discretionary expenses, such as work and medical expenses. This graph shows the impact on the 2018 SPM rate of the addition or subtraction of a single resource element. Some of these elements, such as Social Security and unemployment insurance, are included in the official estimates. Other elements, such as the Supplemental Nutritional Assistance Program benefits, or SNAP, and refundable tax credits are included only in the SPM resource measure. Using this chart, we can see that 27.2 million people were taken out of poverty by Social Security benefits. This figure also shows the breakdown by age, with the majority of individuals taken out of poverty by Social Security aged 65 and older. 8.9 million people were taken out of poverty by refundable tax credits. 3.2 million people were taken out of poverty by SNAP benefits. 
However, subtracting medical expenses from income increased the number of people in poverty by 8 million using the SPM. More information on the Supplemental Poverty Measure is available in the report and online.